Alrighty guys, Mrs. Young here. We are going to read through using the reading essentials, uh, the text that we need to do for today's assignment. So go ahead and get your reading essential and your notebook ready. And how we do that is that we're going to highlight the temperature and latitude in purple. And I want you to scroll down and I want you to highlight seasons in green. And then if you want to go a little bit further and put this purple line, that will indicate how far we're going today, okay? So we have seasons in green and temperature and latitude in purple. Now we can go over and get our notebook also set up. So uh, corresponding with our reading essentials, this section on our notebook, uh, temperature and latitude in purple and seasons in green. You can scroll a little bit, you'll see I have it filled out already. Um, down there at the bottom is our purple line, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to read each section and go back and fill in our uh, notebook notes, okay? So as Earth orbits the sun, the sun shines on the half of the Earth that faces the sun. Sunlight carries energy. The more sunlight that reaches a part of the Earth, the warmer that part becomes. That makes sense. Because Earth's surface is curved, different parts of Earth's surface get, get different amounts of sun's energy. So what we're going to be talking about here is we're going to be talking about with, using these words direct and then indirect. So areas that are receiving direct sunlight are going to be warmer, more intense. Um, areas that are receiving indirect sunlight, um, not as hot, it's gonna be cooler. So energy received by a tilted surface. Suppose you shine a flashlight onto a flat card. The beam shines in a circle on the card. All right, so let's take a look at what that is here. This is what they are um, asking us to do here. So if we've got a flashlight and this is straight up and down, like we have a flat surface. So um, the, the beam shines in the circle on the card. As you tilt the top of the card away from the beam of light, the light becomes more spread out on the card surface. So if we've got it tilted, representing more like the surface of um, the earth, then it is going to become more spread out. We can actually kind of draw that circle like this versus tight like so. All right, so this we're going to be thinking of as direct sunlight, and then this one is indirect sunlight. Okay, so as you tilt the top of the card away from the beam of light, the light becomes more spread out on the card surface. The energy that the light beam carries also spreads out more over the card's surface. An area on the surface within the light beam receives less energy when the surface is tilted relative to the light beam. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit less energy here and a little bit more energy here. So the tilt of Earth's surface, instead of being flat and vertical, like the card shown above on the left, Earth's surface is curved and tilted, somewhat like the card on the right. Earth's surface becomes more tilted as you move away from the equator and toward the poles. As a result, regions of Earth near the poles receive less energy than areas near the equator. This is why Earth is warmer at the equator and colder at the poles. We are going to go ahead and highlight that. That is very important. So as a result, regions of Earth near the poles receive less energy than areas near the equator. This is why it is warmer in the equator and colder at the, at the poles. All right, because we could take a look at our Earth and we could have our, equ our equator here, right? And so this is going to receive more of the direct sunlight. Let's see if I can draw that for you, direct sunlight here. And then the farther you go away from the equator, the less and less and less intense the sun is, okay, because of the curved surface. 
well, I just erased my whole earth. There we go. Okay, so just the idea here that the farther the curve, curve, curve like so. So here is our pole up here. Okay, our North Pole. Okay, so we come to our seasons section um, in our reading essentials. So we know it's time to go to the notebook. So let's go to the notebook. And this section is the section for our notebook. I have gone ahead and uh, pre-filled everything in. The energy in a beam of sunlight is spread out more at the poles than at the equator. This makes Earth colder at the poles and warmer at the equator. So this goes spread out. This goes with the idea of indirect. So that indirect sunlight is not carrying as much heat energy um, than at the equator. So we're going to have more direct when we are at the equator. So go ahead and get that information filled in. You can stop this video at any point to get this information written down, okay? All right, so we see here that we are at seasons, and so we are ready to go back to our reading essentials and read about seasons. Okay, you might think that summer happens when Earth is closest to the sun. However, seasonal changes do not depend on Earth's distance from the sun. In fact, Earth is closest to the sun in January. So let's go ahead and highlight that. So Earth is actually closest to the sun in January by about 5 million kilometers. And so here's the real reason here. The tilt of Earth's rotation axis and Earth's motion around the sun, so the revolution, is what causes the seasons to change. So we know we've got these four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. All right, so why do we have these temperature changes, okay? So during one half of Earth's orbit, the northern half of the rotation axis is toward the sun. Then the northern hemisphere receives more energy from the sun than the summer, southern hemisphere does. So see the figure on the next page. All right, so let's take a look at this picture here. So we have got our sunlight is coming in this way. And so here is the northern hemisphere and we are tilted away from the sun. And so it's receiving less direct sunlight. So we are receiving indirect sunlight here. So the temperatures are going to be cooler and the days are going to be shorter daylight hours and that's what we're experiencing now right I mean it's it gets dark what 5 5 30 um, 6 um, whereas in the summertime it stays light until like 9 30 right so there's so what's up with that okay that is also uh, coming with the, with the lesson so this southern hemisphere is tilted toward so it is receiving direct sunlight so we're going to have fall and winter when we're tilted away. And when we are tilted toward, so here is our equator again, when we're tilted toward, um, then, whoops, when we're tilted toward the sun and this is tilted away, then this is going to be our summer and our spring and um, these guys here on the southern hemisphere, they're going to have an opposite season. I'll talk about that in a moment. So the northern end of the rotation axis is pointed toward the sun. So the northern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight and the southern hemisphere is getting less sunlight. All right, so let's go up here and take a look at that. So um, during one half of Earth's orbit, the northern end of the rotation axis is toward the sun. So let's go ahead and highlight that. Then the northern hemisphere receives more energy from the sun than the southern hemisphere does. Temperatures are higher in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere. Daylight hours last longer in the northern hemisphere. Nights are longer in the southern hemisphere. It is spring and summer in the northern hemisphere and fall and winter in the southern. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this again. 
So when here's our northern and here is southern. Okay, so if it is summer in the northern hemisphere, then it is going to be winter in the southern hemisphere. If we have fall in the northern hemisphere, we are going to have spring in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so our seasons are completely opposite based on northern or southern hemisphere. Okay, so fall and winter in the northern hemisphere. During the other half of Earth's orbit, the northern end of the rotation axis is away from the sun. Let's go ahead and get a highlighter out, showing that we are going to be away from the sun, as shown in the figures here, okay? Uh, then the northern hemisphere receives less energy than the southern hemisphere. The temperature, it's going to be cooler in the northern hemisphere and war warmer in the southern hemisphere. It is fall and winter in the northern hemisphere. At the same time, it is spring and summer, southern, summer in the southern hemisphere. Okay. So we could take a look at this. This was a, a picture from um, a previous lesson, but here is our orbit. Okay, which is our path that the Earth takes for its revolution. Okay, so what we can see here, the northern hemisphere is pointed away. The northern hemisphere is pointed away. So this is going to be winter. Okay, and here we are pointed toward, and this is going to be summer. Okay, all right. So let's take a look at what we need to do for our notebook. So this first graphic here, um, we were just looking at um, uh, the Earth's rotation axis is leaning, what it's, how it's leaning. So in the winter, it is away from the sun. Okay, this is going to be in direct sunlight. Okay, and in the summer, we're going to be toward. So that's going to be direct. So what is halfway in between uh, spring and, or sorry, summer and fall, or summer and winter, sorry, would be spring and fall. And that is when we're leaning neither toward nor away. We'll talk about that uh, a bit more tomorrow or our next lesson when we talk about solstices and equinoxes. So go ahead and get those uh, check marks there and I do want you to write this in that seasons are due to the tilt of the earth's axis it has nothing to do with how close or far away from the sun we are because earth is actually closest to the sun in January we are tilted away so it's cold because our, we are receiving that indirect sunlight so let me see if there's anything nope that's our last thing that we are filling out today so make sure that your notebook notes are filled in for these two sections of our lesson. All right, take care now, bye.